Harry has brought a lot of nuance out of Benny. Hey, what's up, y'all? Welcome to Brews and Reviews, and today I'm reviewing Benny the Butcher and Harry Frauds, the plugs I met too, and I am sipping on a Stone Delicious IPA. This is a 7.7% IPA from the Great Brewery in Escondido, California. So let's get into this highly anticipated project. The original Plugs I Met is widely considered, I think, as Benny the Butcher's best album ever, so everybody was looking forward to this follow-up. To me, I place it second in his catalog. I actually got Tana Talk 3 right above that, but still, I was ready for this one because I loved the original. And this time, we know there's going to be a serious switch in tone with the beats because he's joined by La Musica de Harry Fraud. Harry Fraud produced every track on this project, so his atmospheric, spacey beats should provide a more introspective Benny the Butcher than we always get, considering that he's usually rhyming over those dark, bass-laden Griselda beats. So Harry Fraud just adds to the anticipation of this. He's on a tear, given his recent stellar work with Jim Jones, surprisingly, and Currency. Benny the Butcher also has not been a slouch lately, Burden of Proof was a great album from last year. And it's time to mention that I do have a contest going on. You can win some vinyl, and that could be Illmatic, or that could be Spirit World Field Guide. Whichever is your choice, all you gotta do is subscribe to my channel. Send me a screenshot showing that you're subscribed through one of the channels that are listed, and I will draw a winner in April, at which point you can pick your favorite project here, and I will ship it to you. If the winner doesn't respond within a certain time frame, then I will draw the next name on the list. When Tony met Sosa, we've got Harry Fraud's fingerprints all over this with a saxophone wailing as the main melody in the beat. And sure enough, we do see Benny getting reflective with his very first lines. He says, when said they need less trappers and more poets, I kept talking to hustlers that's more heroic. It's a difference when you rise out the ghetto, come back and grow it. The game broke my heart in three places, I never show it. With his lyrics on this one verse, it's almost like he's been waiting for the perfect opportunity or the perfect beat to say this on because he's very open and emotional and real, yet highly, highly confident at the same time. So Harry has brought a lot of nuance out of Benny. Overall, we have a smooth sample sounding like a 70s TV show theme song. Benny's on his coke raps lyrically and Chinks has a good verse on this, but definitely not a standout like we got from Black Thought at this point on the original album. The guest spots are a step down from the original in my opinion, whereas on that one we got Black Thought, Conway, Jadakiss, Pusha T. On this one, we got a lot of Second Life rappers like 2 Chains, Fat Joe, French Montana, and Jim Jones. Not to knock them at all, but they're not of that consistent caliber like we saw from the vets on the original project. Plug Talk. We got a pitched up vocal sample and more spacey production from Harry Fraud. And at first it's almost a waste of the beat because Benny sounds a little bit behind it. It's not too distracting though and he eventually catches up at the end of the verse. And I was throwing 2 chains some shade but he actually brings it on this verse with a series of numerical metaphors. He says says, by 21, I was a savage. By 22, I had a foreign. By 23, I had crashed it on 24s like Mashburn. 
25 lighters on my dresser. Yes, sir. And let's talk about that last line for a minute. Everybody immediately thinks that came from Kendrick on Backseat Freestyle, given how high profile that song was and frankly how well Kendrick flipped it. But this was actually first said in 1995 by 8Ball and MJG and has become somewhat of an underground rap cliche since then, quoted from everyone from Run the Jewels to Travis Scott, and for some reason, classic rock band ZZ Top even said this line at one point on one of their songs. That's a little hip-hop history lesson. Live by it. We've got some gun raps from Benny, and it's not all glorification. He does present a cautionary tale and some wisdom behind what he's saying. He talks about who should be holding and who shouldn't, noting that there's a lot of people who can't really handle it. So he's saying while this street stuff may look cool, you don't want to get involved. And I gotta say about a line on this, how many times are we going to hear Griselda use the metaphor of comparing shooters to somebody in the NBA? They've done this so many times that Benny has to dig all the way back to the 70s coming up with Pete Maravich to make this rhyme work. This is just a Griselda cliche at this point that was clever the first time we heard it, but I don't want to hear any more NBA shooter metaphors. Aside from that line though this track hits lyrically after noting that rappers have to take the fall for anything found in the tour bus given their high profile aspects and visibility he summarizes the message of the song perfectly with the last two lines he says Go and get a gun and start buying some jewelry. If you're too shook to cope, then just hire security. Talking back, Fraud gives us a flute-led melody and some hyper snares on this for Benny and Fat Joe to spit over more drug-dealing bars as they're talking about the money talking back. Fat Joe looks like he's a little out of practice and he could only muster 12 bars to lace this fire beat. He does have a few lines in there, but uh, even the most standout lines are a little awkward and he even has to explain them with an ad lib at the end. He says, drag me in and out of court, Harvey Weinstein, threw that white up in the pot, give them pipe dreams, and watch it spread like the Wuhan virus, do them dirty for the low like Wu-Tang Cyrus, ODB. Wuhan and Wu-Tang don't even rhyme, so he didn't have to drop the O off Osiris. He could have made that work in the rhyme scheme and said something like this. Watch it spread like the Wuhan virus. Do them dirt like McGirt from the Wu Osiris. There, you don't need the ad lib to clean it up. I fixed it for you, Joe. Not to mention, it is a little bit problematic to say the Wuhan virus in the first place. No instructions. One of the smoothest, most thought-provoking beats on the album. And to me, this is where Benny really shines because it showcases his ability to get really deep while talking about his past life in the drug game. And it shows him as a real, complete human because everybody, no matter what your occupation or past is, tends to get nostalgic about the past. And if you're a nuanced person, you can learn from mistakes in the past to get better at whatever you're doing. He says, we was young, we was rugged, where I hung, we was bugging. And rats get their stripes stripped and tongues in the oven. When it comes to the hustling, I got funds in abundance. And I learned quick, cause a brick don't come with instructions. Tell them youngsters, Benny. Longevity is another great atmospheric beat. And this one may be my favorite instrumental on the project. And I've probably said that about three times already about various tracks, but Harry Fraud is really bringing his A game to this. French Montana kicks an adequate verse, although it does seem at times like he's searching for the next thing to say. Plus, he says, my Hollywood things say she loved me kinda cold. I don't believe her, she a actress 10 Golden Globes. 
I had to look this up. No actress has ever won 10 Golden Globes. The closest is Meryl Streep with nine Golden Globes. So either this dude's dating Meryl Streep and hoping for another win for his bay, or he's being really hyperbolic, or we could give him the benefit of the doubt and say he knew what he was talking about and is going extra clever, saying that his girl's such a great liar that she's got more Golden Globes than anybody. Next up is Jim Jones, who I have to admit, I've never been a fan of, but he dropped a surprisingly good project with Harry Fraud earlier this year, The Fraud Department. If you haven't checked that out and you don't like Jim Jones, check it out. You'll probably be impressed. And his verse here is a longer verse and an extension of the good work that he did on that project. Survivor's Remorse. We've got some contemplative piano lacing the beat and big Benny is so inspired by this instrumental that he goes for the rare third verse and a slight beat switch with the melody going in reverse accompanies this third verse. And I love beat switches. I'll take those anytime. But this made me think that our attention spans are so short now for music and so used to a two verse format that a beat switch is almost required just to keep a listener interested for the third track. And that's kind of sad because we used to get three verses on every track in the 90s and early 2000s. Thanksgiving. This is one of those tracks that doesn't work in isolation. They dropped this as a single and I didn't really like it. I kind of thought that the plugs I met too would not be as great as it ended up being because of this release. But in the context of the album, it changes the whole feeling of the song. Benny really opens up spitting some real lyrics about his own newsmaking experience and getting robbed and shot. And he says, in therapy, learning to walk again, four of them in a Rari, they shot me. I'm back cocky in the jewelry that I bought again. They want me to post when I slide. They say I'm gangster. Trust me, it won't make Instagram. It's going to make the papers. Benny the Butcher is forever consistent. We know exactly what to expect. We're not going to get any mind-blowing flows or groundbreaking lyrics. And that really speaks to his appeal. How he can seemingly make so many songs about the same thing, yet still keep listeners so interested in what he's saying. While on the same tone, both flow-wise and lyrically, the songs yet somehow seem distinct from each other. And from his previous projects, for that matter. So while we didn't expect him to go far from his drug rap trademark, especially given that this album is called The Plugs I Met Too, his producer did create a very beautiful soundscape for him to touch that topic in a very open, emotional, and nuanced way getting really deep on the topic that he knows so much about. In the end, this is not better than the original The Plugs I Met, but it's still a great listen and a great project for the Griselda catalog and the 2021 catalog so far at that. I give this an 8 out of a 12 pack. Thank you for watching my review of The Plugs I Met 2. If you like this, subscribe to my channel now. You can win a vinyl. Also, hit like and hit me up in the comments. If you didn't like it, also let me know why in the comments. I drop hip-hop and hops related content consistently. So until I see you next time, keep buzzing.